Hey guys, another great edition of Quarantine with Coaches. You know, one of the things I've tried to do with this project is, is really give a platform to guys that maybe don't always get that chance, that opportunity, and uh, what a better opportunity today uh, than this one. I got five GAs, graduate assistants, uh, all over the country who have agreed to, to join me today and share their experiences, and, and I'm really pumped up to have them all. Why don't you guys just start by just sort of introducing yourself uh, you know, where you're at and, and what you're doing. Tarek, let's go with you. Yep. Uh, I'm Tarek Yegi. I'm an offensive GA at Temple University, and I work primarily with the tight ends. I'm Lucas Skiba. I'm an offensive GA at Northern Illinois University, um, primarily working with the offensive line. I'm Tim Hoover. I'm a defensive GA at Wisconsin Whitewater. Uh, I work with linebackers and defensive line. Uh, Ronald Booker. Uh, on the offensive side of the ball here at the University of Pittsburgh, and I work with the wide receivers. How are we doing, uh, Nicholas Holton or Moose uh, at Eastern Michigan University, working with offensive GA, working with the offensive line? Awesome. And uh, thanks, guys, all you guys for joining me. Uh, I really appreciate it. Um, one thing I know about uh, all you guys is you have some ties to Division Three, and I always find that interesting, the guys that, are able to climb the ranks. I, I think there's a lot of coaches out there that want to know how to do it and this and that. Um, but uh, let's start with this. Let's, how was your time at division, the Division Three level uh, prepared you for your current role? Let's go with, with you, Moose, to start. Uh, first off, you know, I was, thanks for having me, Tim. Um, the biggest thing for me, you know, getting my start at Division Three level was the ability to have my own room uh, right away, working with the running backs for two years and then hybrids and tight ends for a year. So, you know, that experience was invaluable right away of being able to have my own room, coach my own, you know, ability, you know, to coach my own guys, and then have my hands in, you know, everything at the Division three level from equipment to admissions to recruiting and all that stuff was invaluable for sure. Yeah. Uh, how about you, Book? Yeah, similar to what uh, Moose said, just, you know, for five years I had my own room. So, that was a really good uh, experience for me, just being able to develop as a coach, get used to managing personalities and things of that nature. Uh, but also uh, kind of what he alluded to a little bit was just, you know, wearing different hats. Uh, so during my, my final year at Rhodes, um, I was special teams coordinator, wide receivers coach, strengthening, strength and conditioning coach, uh, in charge of equipment, social media, and then uh, also uh, the liaison for like our uh, laundry room workers, like the student workers. So just doing that was really good because, you know, it prepared me to be responsible for a lot of things, uh, which is, you know, similar to like being a GA. Uh, and, and a lot of those roles I have to document a lot of things. So that was also similar to, you know, being a GA where you go in and you're taking notes all day and you're, you know, documenting everything for the full-time coaches and whatnot. And, you know, uh, during my time at Rose, I was there till probably 10 or 11 o'clock uh, most nights. So, you know, when I got to pit, you know, working those long hours, getting here early, you know, wasn't a big uh, issue for me. Coach Coach Jennings was grinding you, huh? <laughs> uh, no, not, not under Jennings. Uh, it's, you know, just okay. Jennings pretty laid back, just the nature of myself getting up early and then with all the responsibilities with everything else, just got to be there pretty late most nights. So. Sure. Hey, uh, so everyone here is at least finished one year in now as GA. Uh, what advice would you have for those guys out there watching this that want to become a GA? Start with you, uh, Tim Hoover. Uh, great question, Tim. I would say um, don't be scared to work in a position like that you weren't most comfortable with. Um, you always be willing to learn whatever you can. And then just being all in is the most important thing. Like if you give it everything you got, you're willing to take on any responsibility, it, great things will happen for you. Awesome. How about you, Skips? Yeah, kind of one of the biggest things uh, just to be like becoming a GA, looking to become one, you, you got to be open. You got to be Kind of connected um kind of this whole job is being connected and staying connected with guys and that's just part of the part of the business so if you're looking to become a ga make sure you're making those connections um staying with staying in touch with guys that sometimes you don't always talk to day day in and day out but maybe you shoot it shooting a text a call here once a month once a week just staying connected is huge um and then just be able to work um <laughs> That's, there's no uh, there's no substitute for it. If you're able to work and just put the hours in, um, productivity over activity is kind of huge in my mind. Awesome. 
And uh, everyone out there wants to know, what does an average day look like? You know, certainly maybe, you know, there's some type of basis for all of you, but Tark, what's an average day look for, like for you uh, at Temple? Yeah, so obviously it depends on season and in season and out of season. Um, in season for us, really Sunday through Wednesday is kind of our grind. Um, those are the early mornings, late nights, um, really packing stuff in, game planning. Um, and then usually by by Thursday, it gets more to like now we're, we're finalizing everything. Um, and Coach Carey's actually huge on you know, Thursday getting guys out of the office a little bit earlier so they can go see their families. Um, it allows us as a GA, though, we get to stay there, and it's a great time for us to get some, you know, breakdown done and stuff away from our game plan and whatnot. Um, and then Friday, obviously, is our, our travel day. So our uh, teams are going to eat and then travel, uh, whether it's, you know, staying in a hotel locally or um, traveling to a new city. Um, Saturday is game day, and then, you know, wake up early Sunday, make sure the film's broken down, and you're back and rolling back through Sunday through Wednesday grind. And off season, it's just day to day, it's different. Depends on, you know, whether we're approaching spring ball or not. Um, and then obviously, summer was is going to be a little more camps, but this year will be different, obviously. Yeah. Hey, Moose, same question for you. Yeah, I would agree. Obviously, you know, Tark hit on basically the same thing. Probably get up, try and get to the office between, you know, 5.30 and 6 and basically go whenever our staff meeting, you know, 7 a.m. or 8 a.m., kind of get some stuff done before then. After staff meeting, you know, usually start rewatching practice film, getting ready for the upcoming, you know, practice, setting scout cards, all that stuff. And then after practice, you know, a lot of our, you know, coaches watch some more film for a little bit and then head home for the night after practice. And that's when, you know, we can get in and get the rest of the stuff done, you know, in terms of game planning and breaking down more film as we move forward. Uh, in terms of quarantine life, though, uh, the schedule's been a lot different, that's for sure. Still been trying to make sure, you know, you get up early and get some film broken down. Um, obviously, it's a lot harder being virtually trying to get those playlists shared and all that stuff. But still breaking down film and having some lunches, lunch, actual ham sandwich lunch you get to make yourself now. And then uh, basically, you know, we've been doing some position meetings virtually. So getting ready for those in the afternoon. But quarantine life has definitely been a lot different and makes you actually wish the uh, – the day-to-day -day grind of being in the office, for sure. No doubt. Same here. Hey, uh, you know, all you guys share uh, probably a primary uh, responsibility of breaking down film and setting up pads and putting together scout cards, all that stuff. But what was the one thing this year, what task uh, were you assigned that provided you with maybe the most chance to grow? Uh, I'll start with you, Buck. Yeah, uh, so during camp, um, I was assigned with, you know, meeting with our younger guys, the younger receivers, and just kind of catching them up on the playbook and, and installing things with them because our older guys, it was their, you know, second or third time uh, going through the install. So we were just kind of installing at a fast pace with them. So for the younger guys, it became a lot of uh, memorization early on. So one of the things that I was tasked with was, you know, just getting them caught up and trying to understand the formations and the calls and everything. I think that benefited me because a lot of times as a GA, you know, we're asked to just make copies and, type this up and, you know, make this scout card. We don't get a lot of opportunities to actually go out there and do the profession of coaching and teaching guys. So being able to do that, I thought, was uh, really valuable for me uh, to continue to grow and learn uh, as a coach and continue to fine tune those skills. Same thing for you, Skips. Yeah, uh, I kind of had about two things that kind of I learned a ton from. Um, the first one was being that kind of the first line on like scouting reports because we are the ones breaking down film. Um, so kind of when you get in on Sunday, after you get done with uh, Saturday's game, getting into the next game, you're kind of already watched the film more than the other coaches have. You kind of give that first impression. So when you have the opportunity to maybe give them your thoughts or tell them something that they, they want to hear um, to kind of basically accelerate the breakdown process and game planning process is huge. Um, uh, at least in my eyes, to that to that aspect. And the second thing was uh, running a scout team defense uh, here um, was huge for me. Uh, our offensive line coach is a big stickler on uh, on defensive gap fits. So um, as a young coach, I was wasn't as in tune to that. Um, so learning more defensively and those defensive schemes was huge for me. Um, and just th that opportunity to keep coaching the defensive guys because it's still communication and assignment alignment technique stuff on that end as well. Yeah. 
Hey, uh, well, you guys have just finished um, at least your first year as a GA. What was something that uh, you learned in year one that you'll take with you to year two? Let's start with uh, you, Tim Hoover. Um, I would say just learn anything you can from anyone you can. So say you're the running backs are meeting and you got some free time, go sit in, listen to another coach talk running backs, just sit in any meeting you can. Um, just learn from every coach because every coach has some, some to offer you. So make sure you're always learning from the people around you. It's probably the most important thing. Awesome. Tart? Yeah, Tim, what you said is awesome. I, I can't agree with that more. Um, for me, it's really anticipation. Um, obviously, going to Temple right away my first couple of weeks, you know, you're kind of learning the, the, how things go, learn the ropes, and then just the more you can anticipate, like, because as a GA, you just get hit with stuff. All of a sudden, you get piled on a bunch of stuff, and now you got hours of work to do. And really, if you anticipate stuff coming, uh, makes life easier on you, and then the, makes life easier on the coaches above you, too. Awesome. And, and so we'll wrap it up with, with this question here, and, and, and this will be for every one of you. Um, you know, this is, you know, I, I want you to imagine there's a guy that just got hired on your staff. He's going to be working side by side with you. What is, uh, so what are, you know, some, some things you would tell him as far as advice uh, for the guy that's starting next to you uh, tomorrow? Uh, we'll go with, uh, let's go with you, Lucas. Uh, one of the biggest things is work hard and then your work be detailed. Uh, that's kind of, if you can work hard and all of a sudden your stuff is crap, coaches don't get happy, too happy with that. Um, and ask questions and don't be afraid to mess up because no one's going to be perfect. It's, it's, you're all, we're all learning in this profession. So if you can ask questions, get it right. Um, the first time is going to be huge in everybody's eyes. Uh, uh, Moose. Uh, definitely. You know, like Lucas said, that's a great point. The other thing I would tell them is don't be the first to leave and make sure you ask your boss if they need anything or any of the other position coaches what they need before you ever leave the building for sure. Awesome. Uh, let's go Hoover. Yeah, definitely good stuff. Um, work hard uh, to just find work. Don't let work find you. Like there's always stuff to be done. There's always something you can do, whether that's working ahead, helping out your other GAs, helping out other people. Just make sure you're finding work and the work's not coming to you when it's, when it's too late. Awesome. Book? Yeah, uh, similar to what kind of Tim answered on his last question. Uh, just you can sit in on other meetings and learn football. I think that's a big thing uh, for me is just try to get into the other rooms, whether it's the DB coach or our O-line coach, sitting in their meetings. But uh, also um, one other thing that I think was really good that I've been doing is keep a journal of, uh, you know, all the little ideas that you kind of think of during your time, something that, you know, y'all might not be doing at your current program, but one of the coaches on your staff that said, hey, this is something that I've done at one of my uh, prior places. Uh, so I think, you know, doing that is uh, definitely something that I would recommend for another guy. Awesome. Tark. Yeah, but that's a great idea. I, I do that too. You write down plays as you're watching film. I like, couldn't agree more. Uh, I would say always be available. Um, if a coach is yelling for your name down the hall and you're not there, not a good look. Uh, so always be around, always be available. Uh, no matter what it is, just make sure if your name's yelled that you're there. Awesome. Hey, we got a little bit of time left. Uh, we've been doing this rapid fire thing. There's five of you. There's five questions. So we'll do our best uh, to keep this in order and keep this organized, okay? Uh, we'll start with book, and uh, we'll go from there. Uh, average amount of sleep you get during the year? Uh, five to six hours. Tark? Yeah, five to six. Who? Brad, about six. Moose? Yep, five to six a night. <laughs> oh, five. No oh. one wanted to say more. No one wanted to say more, huh? <laughs> well, it depends. You know, uh, Friday night game, you know, get to the hotel, you might get seven in. Yeah. Depending. Catch up. There you go. Uh, have you ever slept in the office? Same order. Buck, we'll go with you to start again. Uh, yeah, one night last week of the season. Yeah, we actually got smart. We kept an air mattress in there. There you go. Yeah, one time. Uh, yep. uh, Sunday and Monday nights, we just got that brand new recruiting lounge. Beautiful couch in there. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's easy to wake up. Co you know, you right. set the alarm and coaches are coming in and you just pop right in, take a shower, and good to go. Yeah. Skip. Yeah. No, nah, I actually, uh, at one point, I tried not to ever sleep in the office, get home, get some good sleep. So There you go. Uh, biggest mentor? Book. Uh, 
my uh, the guy that I work under right now, Chris Beatty. He's been awesome. Uh, yeah, for me, Mike Ramovich, our OC, he's just showing me how to, like, make simple connections with, like, high school coaches in our area and always write them letters, send them texts, calls, so small things like that. He's been great. Who? Uh, a guy by the name of Mike Jennings. Um, just his passion for everything he does, something that I took note of right when I started working with him. Just extremely passionate all the time. Awesome. Moose. Uh, definitely, you know, my offensive line coach, Steve Helminiak at Loris College, now the head coach. You know, gave me my first opportunity to, you know, coach at the Division three level and get me into it and taught me a ton. And then obviously, me, you know, my uh, offensive coordinator there, Jake Olson, at the same time, you know, taught me how to be a professional in this profession. And then obviously, you know, James Patton, my offensive line coach that I work under here, has done a phenomenal job of grooming me, I should say. Skiba. Uh, right now, uh Daryl, like Paul said, he's my, my O-line coach here, and he's done a tremendous job kind of helping me weave my way through this. And then uh, also Kevin Bowes, you know, head coach at Whitewater, he uh, he kind of got me on this path truly to coaching and has helped me kind of guide my my career. Awesome. Uh, all right, this should be – we'll, we'll, we'll liven it up here the last two. Uh, the best show you're binging uh, during quarantine? Look, yeah, I finished uh, Ozark a couple weeks ago. That show was awesome. I watch The Office. I can't get rid of it. I'm like 15 <laughs> times through. Yeah, I watch The Office every single night before I go to sleep. But I would say my actual answer is I've been going back and watching uh, Pittsburgh Steelers games from 2009 and just watching Troy Palmalu fly around the field. That's definitely it right now. Awesome. Moose. I just finished uh, Outer Banks on Netflix. A uh, little pirate ship, you know, gold, treasure hunting, a bunch of motorcycles flying around. It's, it's pretty interesting. It's not bad. Skibs? I've uh, I kind of been switching between uh, Ozark and Altered Carbon on Netflix. Okay, nice. Finally, uh, you guys are probably not too far off uh, than what I've been doing, which is it's been rice, beans, and tuna pretty much every single day. I call it homemade Chipotle. Uh, what's been your go-to quarantine meal? Uh, yeah, oh. tuna sandwich. There you go. I'm back home, so whatever my mom makes, it seems like it's brats every other week. <laughs> Doing it right. Yeah, I'm jealous, but Jack's Pizza for sure. Here we go. Moose? I go the classic ham, ham and cheese sandwich with uh, baked beans, and then you throw some salsa in the baked beans and use it as a dip with your chips, tortilla chips. The baked beans on the sandwich or on the side? On the side, baked beans and salsa and tortilla chips. Wow. That's pretty good. Skips. Over over the eggs and toast, baby. <laughs> Simple. Easy. Simple. But steady. I love it. Hey, guys, I just want to thank all you guys for joining me today on Quarantine with Coaches. These are great young uh, coaches, and the future is bright for all of them. Appreciate your time, fellas. Yeah, no, Thanks, Tim. Thank Thanks for having us, Tim. Appreciate it.